Hello, and welcome to our episode on the scientific revolution. From 1550 to 1700, Europe experienced a scientific revolution when new ideas in physics, astronomy, biology, anatomy changed the way Europeans viewed the natural world. During this time, scientists will question everything they know to be true and will attempt to prove it scientifically. They will start to move away from church teachings and control as they start to experiment with the world around them. These brave new scientists will use logic and the newly developed scientific method to find the answers to their questions. The scientific revolution began in the 1550s because of the recent discoveries in other areas of European life. During the Renaissance, people began to question old beliefs and thought that humans could accomplish anything. The Renaissance is known as the time of rebirth in Europe, and the scientific revolution is a direct effect of this mentality. The next major influencer of the scientific revolution was the Protestant Reformation. During the Reformation, people began to question the ideas of the Roman Catholic Church. It was brought to light that the church did not necessarily have all the answers, and now a large portion of Europe did not practice Catholicism anymore, which will even further diminish the influence of the church. The age of exploration also played a large part in influencing the scientific revolution. People began to discover new lands that they did not know existed, and this will lead people to wonder what other new things might be out there that they are missing. It allows for curiosity to lead advancements in many new math and science fields. There are a few major scientists that we will discuss today. The first is Nicholas Copernicus. Copernicus developed the heliocentric theory. Copernicus was born in Poland and drafted his first copy of his manuscript detailing the heliocentric theory around 1514. He refrained from publishing his work until closer to his death because he was afraid of scorn from the scientific and church community because of how eccentric his theory was. He also did not have the mathematical skills to prove it completely, so he was not confident enough to publish his work until much later. His theory will radically change Europe's concept of the universe and will lay the foundation for modern astronomy. Johannes Kepler is the German who will be able to mathematically prove Copernicus's theory only about a hundred years later. Kepler was an astronomer and mathematician who proved that the planets moved in an elliptical orbit and do not always travel at the same speed around the sun. Kepler was a devout Christian, which may have helped keep his work from being called heresy by the church. He believed that the universe was part of God's original creation and man was just trying to map it out. He called this new, new unit of study celestial physics. Galileo Galilei is perhaps the most famous of the scientists we will talk about today. He is most well known for his improved version of the telescope. With this new telescope, he was able to make observations about the moon and the solar system. Galileo is also responsible for creating the law of inertia and he will perfect the scientific method to be what you know it as today from your science class. Galileo's teachings, however, were considered to be extremely controversial. He questioned long-held church belief about an Earth-centered universe. Galileo was from Italy, so unlike Copernicus and Kepler, he had to contend with the Catholic Church. Galileo was brought before the Inquisition, which is basically the scariest police force of the Middle Ages slash Renaissance era. And he was forced under the threat of death to publicly recant his ideas. As we know now, Galileo's ideas will not leave the minds of the scientists of the world, and the church won't be able to stop them from spreading. But he does actually recant his ideas to avoid this painful death. Isaac Newton is also a very well-known English physicist who completed most of his work in the late 1600s. Of course, he is most famous for discovering and explaining the theory of gravity, and I even have the famous picture here for you of the apple falling on his head. Newton will also study the physics of motion, light, and heat, and he will create calculus to help prove his theories. Up next, we have Mr. William Harvey. 
I'm sure this is a scientist that you've never heard of, but he is responsible for furthering the field of anatomy. Up until and even during his time, the church and public opinion frowned upon using dead bodies for research. They considered it to be unholy and degrading for the body. So doctors and scientists were only able to legally use living bodies to learn about how the body worked, unless they were given some kind of special dispensation, which didn't happen often. I'm sure this also paints a picture of why, up until more recent history, humans have known very little about their own anatomy. Scientists would often rob graves in an attempt to learn more about the human body. Leonardo da Vinci was known to have done this as well. He was also a student of anatomy, and several years ago, excavators discovered human remains hidden within the walls of one of his homes. At first, the excavators thought that da Vinci had murdered someone, but later it was speculated that he was most likely using the corpse as an experiment and had to hide the body somewhere no one would find it. Anyways, back to William Harvey. Harvey was the first to prove that blood circulates through the body and is pumped by the heart. Harvey is also known for naming specific veins and ventricles, as you can see from the labels here on the left. Our last scientist is a man named Andreas Vesalis, who also studied human anatomy. Vesalis added more knowledge to the study that had been previously done since the last 1,500 years. He took the work of a famous Roman author called Galen and attempted to prove or disprove all of his theories. It is through this method of study that he came up with a pretty accurate skeleton, as well as a detailed sketch of the inside of the body, which, as I will remind you, was basically unheard of before this time. He then published his work so that future scientists would benefit from it. The scientific revolution led the way to major advancements that never could have happened before the Renaissance, Reformation, or Age of Exploration. These scientists paved the way for the technology and knowledge that we have today. Thanks for watching.